everyone this is Marie of historical Bell and welcome back to my channel today I am going to be showing you how I made my 1880s engagement dress bodice to make this bodice I used truly Victorian pattern TV 422 1880s dinner bodice with a lot 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 of adjustments if you are interested in all of those adjustments please go back and check out my mock-up video that I made last week today I'm just going to be talking about and showing you how I made the bodice once I had already decided on the pattern and the adjustments so here I am cutting out the fabric I'm using my mock-up as the pattern template and I'm cutting out my fashion fabric which is this beautiful gray wool. If you are interested in more of my fabric choices and how I came to decide upon this fabric for this dress, please go ahead and look at my fabric choosing video or my shopping for my engagement fabric dress video. I will have all videos that I mention in this video linked down in the description box. I did not include sleeves in my mock-up, so I still do need to cut the lining out for the sleeves as well as the fashion fabric. So I wanted a lot of embroidery on this dress. In the instructions, it said, because of the time period, I can put embroidery anywhere and it's good. So that's what I decided to do. And as you can see, I had to take into account my embroidery hoops. I am actually, this is the first time right here that I am using my smaller of the two embroidery hoops because I am going to embroider just the edge of the cuff of the sleeve. But when I'm cutting out the sleeve pattern, I have to take into account, I still need the sleeve to fit into the embroidery hoop. So. I, I might have to leave a little bit of extra room. You probably saw as I was cutting out things there that I, I laid the hoops on the fabric and cut those out as part of the pattern because it is. And then I would just mark where I needed it to go with a blue pen. Now that I have combined three separate preset designs in my embroidery machine, I am going to embroider. I'm going to be embroidering using all of my five additional colors, which would be amethyst, ruby, sapphire, turpaline, and ruby. And those are going to be flower colors that look like my dearest ring, which I will be showing in a later video. That video is not quite out yet, but I really wanted my embroidery to imitate the dearest ring that Stephen had given me. and. I, I really love how it turned out. You'll see how it turns out though. So you can see a very faint blue line on the left side of the embroidery right there. And that is the line that actually marks the end of where I want the sleeve to be. So I am embroidering right, right up the cuff of the sleeve. This project was really a, um, <laughs> a challenge for me which i i feel like i rose to the challenge but it was a challenge nonetheless of matching embroidery so matching to make sure the, the one sleeves embroidery matches the other sleeves embroidery that both sides of the neckline look right that this back looks right and that they match each other because you don't want it one to be higher than the other or lower than the other or not their same size as the other so it was very much uh a challenge to make sure everything lined up perfectly. I really love my embroidery machine. I love the preset designs in my embroidery machine. As I mentioned, this design right here that I am taking out of the hoop is a combination of three preset designs. I'm going to be using all preset designs for this project and they're all from the same section of preset design so they all match each other. Here I am trimming up some loose threads and then just tearing away that backing. I am using tear away backing. That's what I am going to be using for all of the embroidery designs on this fabric. And then I'm cutting along those thin blue lines right there to make the sleeve, well, be where it's supposed to be. I then embroidered the other sleeve and you can see I am using this as a guide. I made both sleeves a little bit big so that I can trim them up 
so that they match each other. So now I'm going to make sure they match and, you know, tidy those up a bit. You can see there I, I pinned along the edges and especially just made sure those embroidery pieces lined up so that they are the right height, that they are right next to each other and are the same. Now I'm going to begin embroidering the bodice neckline. Positioning the fabric within the hoop is also incredibly important. You, I don't think you can really quite see it here, but I have a very thin blue line that I made with a fabric marker going right along the neckline as well, and I am lining that up between the two middle points of this hoop. I'm doing this because then I can try to guarantee where the embroidery is going to be, but also because I need to make sure it matches the other side of the front bodice piece. Here I am selecting the embroidery styles that I want to go around this neckline. I am combining several. Right now I have picked two that are very well, they're the same <laughs> and they're from the same chapter, the same section as the uh, preset designs that I use for the sleeve. So here I am combining three. I'm just going to do a nice straight line. I am here making sure you can trace where the design is going to go. So right here I am tracing the design to make sure that it's going exactly where I want it. And then of course, it's where I want it, thank goodness. Uh, sometimes it takes some fiddling around to get that done, but now I'm going to thread the machine and get it embroidering. Right here, this is my embroidery roadmap. It tells me what's up next. So next up we have some purple thread. So I'm going to put that in, thread it up, and then start embroidering some beautiful purple flowers, which represent the amethyst stone in my ring. Now that one section of the embroidery is done, it is time to do the same thing all over again. And you may have noticed, I'm not using the same colors as the preset design suggests, and I instead have decided my own colors. Uh, it worked out perfectly though. The flower design for this uh, preset design has five colors, and I also wanted to use five colors to represent the different colors and the different gemstones in the deer string. So I was able to very easily just translate what colors went where and to just assign different colors. Uh, yellow in the preset design meant red to me. Uh, the purple was the same. Uh, I think blue was the same, but there, and there were just a few that I, I swapped out to make it more to my liking to fit my needs.
the third and for this section final embroidery design this one is much shorter than the other two but it i needed it to you know fit inside the hoop so it's basically the same flowers it's just a smaller design but it blends in very very well Now I am going to embroider the other side of the bodice front and of course I'll be using my way backing for this as well. This one is going to be a little bit different though. I'm not going to do it exactly like the other one. I am going to have a little bit of a different design you'll see but here you can actually see the faint blue line that I am making sure go between those two points those two middle points right there of course the bodice does come in so I'm making sure the top line and the bottom line still line up on the middle points and then it's going to curve around a little bit so this one I am going to be using a lot of the same preset designs but it's also going to be a little different because I'm going to want it to curve around the bottom of the neckline so here the these preset designs were wonderful and are exactly what I wanted uh, and needed really and here there is a curved floral piece which was a little tricky to work with i had to make sure that i angled it correctly so it lined up with the straight line that i wanted to go around the neckline but it worked it worked uh here i i realized that um i have the one big long piece the the shorter piece to kind of fill in the middle there and then of course that curved piece and i'm making these also a mirror reflection the top two pieces are a mirror reflection of the other side so the red flowers are always uh or yellow on this uh piece on the preset design they're they're red in my design but they are always facing the inside of the neckline so they are always facing towards the neck of course here i i realized once i put my my hoop in that i actually uh i made it go the wrong way so now i'm going to have to i'm adjusting everything back a little bit so that it well uh lines up with the fabric and here i am tracing it this one is harder to trace because it traces the outline it doesn't you know just trace every little thing but I, I'm having to do this a lot because I'm trying to make sure and guess and look on the screen and then look there and make sure, well, it's going to work. So there you saw my little road map. I love my little road map because, you know, it tells me what color is going to be done next. It also tells me how long it is taking. So the last one that I did, it said it would take 16 minutes. This one says that it's going to take 18 minutes. That is true for how long it is actually embroidering it's not true for how long it actually takes you to embroider because it does not count you changing out threads which takes time it's not necessarily difficult but it's just it takes you know 30 seconds to pop on that spool of thread wind it through and thread the needle even though it does have an automatic threading uh, feature which is fantastic and i <laughs> love it so much it's so easy but it just it, it takes a second to do all that so i always it's it says 18 minutes it's actually longer i think this is the longest i ever spent making a dress because of all the detail work of all the ruffles of all the embroidery 
I, I think this is probably my most involved project. So most of the places where I have chosen to put embroidery, especially on, well, on this dress, is because I am working off of my reference gown pictures, which you can see in my fabric shopping video for this dress. And I'm basically trying to recreate a little bit the places where the embroidery was on that dress. So I have my historical reference point being that one dress that I found and then kind of using that as inspiration, not trying to copy it exactly in any form, truly. Um, I started out wanting to copy it, it more exactly and then it kind of developed into my own interpretation of it and I, I like doing my own interpretation better most of the time and especially in this case it because it became more meaningful to me to symbolize um, the dearest ring and our engagement far more than if I were just to do a museum reproduction. Of course, museum reproductions are, you know, amazing and fantastic and require so much work. Uh, I have never done one, but I do aspire one day to do one. I am now preparing for the back of my dress to be embroidered. I did not have reference photos of the back of my dress because there seems to be none from the museum on the internet. Therefore, I could only guess about what the back of the dress looked like, and this is fun because I get to use my imagination. Since the pattern said that I could basically put embroidery wherever I wanted to and it would be period appropriate, I decided let's do more more is always better, right? <laughs> so I decided to put some embroidery on the back. It's not going to fall around the neckline. Um, it instead is going to be two large floral pieces like you see right there on the back and I call them my little floral wings because they are going to perch a little bit on the top of my shoulder blade. This is from the same family of designs that I have been using, but I have not used this particular one yet.
Now with my back pieces embroidered with my little floral wings, it is now time to start cutting out the interlining. I did not actually, I, I really thought about skipping this part, but then I decided, no, no, it calls for it. It'll be good. I want to make sure it has a good shape. Kitties, kitties, can you not play on my fabric? I know you just want to have fun. Okay, maybe not take a bath right here. Can I cut this out? All right, thanks. <clears throat> So I have never done an interlining before and I didn't really know what one was, but for all of you who also might not know what it is, an interlining is a layer of fabric used between two outer layers of fabric to give strength, support, stability, and shape retention to the outer shell fabric um, against any type of distortion while it is being worn or you know, stored thereafter. The pattern called for the interlining fabric to be flat lined to the outer shell fabric. And flat lining is the process of cutting your pattern from an underlying support fabric and then mounting it to the fashion fabric, usually just, you know, stitching around the edges and that that's it just because then it'll come it, it'll basically become one piece of fabric the way that you flatline it so it it becomes a double layer and then it's treated as one piece going forward in the construction and this is very much a vital part of sewing victorian bodices and here uh, uh this is a victorian bodice and i am doing such so here are the bodice pieces that have been flatlined to the interlining. So now, uh, because that piece is really, it has become one with the interlining, I am now going to put darts in the front bodice. Now I am just going to pin all of the bodice pieces together that have been flatlined to the inner lining. They're all going to become, well, an actual bodice. So there we have the front bodice, we have the side bodice, we have the back side bodice, and then we have the back bodice piece. So the pattern calls for boning basically on all seams and the darts. I don't want to do this. I think that this is already going to be a very stiff bodice with the 
the wool outer fabric, the interlining, the lining is going to be over corset. So, um, I'm not going to do all of it because boning is expensive and time consuming. So I am just, but it does need some boning. I, I do agree with that. Um, especially in the front. Uh, so I am going to put boning in on the first dart in pretty much just that one. I decided to hand sew the boning casing in. I did not think that a machine could get it as close and precise as I wanted it. I was very nervous about it catching the front fabric, especially since I'm just sewing this onto a dart. So hand sewing it was. Now it is in time to install the lining to the outer fabric of the bodice, which is probably one of the easier portions of the making of this bodice, but it's also probably one of the longest. Just a lot of pinning and then a lot of sewing. <laughs> All right, now that the lining has been installed, I am going to turn it right side out. Again, a little bit challenging, but I have a kitty helper, so it makes it all better. Now I'm returning to those sleeves. These are two piece coat sleeves. So I am going to have to put the sleeves together before I can install the sleeves into the bodice. And then I needed to install the lining into the sleeve.
So the struggle was real. Putting these sleeves into the bodice. One sleeve went in great. The other, it took me three times to put the sleeve in. No, I didn't put footage in of that because it was just, it would be very, very long. But just no. <laughs> it took me three times to get those one other sleeve in. You would think the sleeves are the, the same sleeves. You would think it would be easy. But because they're coat sleeves, they have to hang a certain way and they're, they're you know, they, they have a shape to them. So it being off a little bit, it looks really bad and you can tell it's off and then your arm doesn't fit right in the sleeve. So the one went in, no problem. And then the other one, well, it took three times to actually go in correctly. The original photos that I was looking at for the reference photos for this dress had it um, being closed with buttons. But in the, the interest of time, as I have a photo shoot coming up very soon for this, or at least I did at the time, I decided I was going to just go with my hook and eye tape because I love hook and eye tape and um, it's, it's faster and easier than doing all of the buttonholes and sewing on buttons. I had also not found buttons that I really, really love to go with this dress. And you know, perhaps someday I will. I can always just seam rip that hook and eye tape out and redo it with buttons. Um, Perhaps I'll do that one day and remake it, but I, I liked it with with the um, hook and eye tape. I thought it made it to where you focus on the embroidery more than just focusing on uh, the, the buttons. I didn't want to detract from all that embroidery that I spent so long doing. And well, here it is. The bodice has been completed. I think it has a very nice shape and the embroidery looks looks really good. I need to, you know, iron it down a little bit, but I it's it is looking really good, I think. Uh so thank you so much for watching this portion of my making my engagement dress. Uh next week I will hopefully be back with how I made the underskirt and then of course there will also be a video about how I made the overskirt and until next time, happy sewing! And of course, if this is the first video that you have stumbled upon or you haven't watched our engagement video yet, I would highly recommend going to go do that. It makes me smile every time I watch it.